Well, hey everybody, this is uh, Tim Iman, an unannounced Facebook Live. I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm doing rallies all weekend long, and I just wanted to let everybody know about it. Uh, we're going to be in Port Orchard later today. Um, going to be from 5.30 to 7 down on the waterfront. Uh, hoping people can join us for that. Also going to be in um, Yakima tomorrow, my hometown. Uh, going to be there from 1 to 3 on Sunday. And then also going to be in Wenatchee uh, about 5 to 7. So uh, I'm really excited about it. Having a chance to travel all over the state, something I've been doing for 22 years, I'm just doing it as a candidate now. So um, before I end up going there, I was just hoping to take a little bit of your time and just talk about some of the aspects of the campaign that have been just uh, really amazing. Uh, we just had a debate in Camas, Washington. Uh, Liz Pike and her organization down there, the Women's Club down there, organized it, and it was absolutely one of the high points of this campaign for me. I just, I can't tell you the energy that I had that night, the absolute passion that I have running against uh, Jay Inslee, and that crowd, they saw somebody that is gonna be a fighter against Jay Inslee. Uh, all the other candidates were there, they all had um, things to say, but I think people saw uh, just a really sharp contrast as far as uh, uh, passion, excitement, somebody that's absolutely gonna get in Inslee's face and take him out. Uh, on the issues, we're pretty much all saying the same stuff. Uh, the difference is I've actually delivered results over the last 22 years, and also as a candidate, I'm doing everything I can uh, to fight for the taxpayers as well. But um, uh, today, I'm gonna be in uh, Port Orchard, uh, Saturday here, 5.30 to 7, having a rally there. Gonna be having a rally also on Sunday in Yakima and also in Wenatchee, and just doing everything I can uh, to show you uh, the kind of candidate I'm gonna be and the kind of governor uh, that I would be. Uh, but keeping me humble, which is kind of nice, which I think is really, really important, is uh, my daughter, Riley. Uh, Riley's actually going to be at all three rallies. So we're going to have Riley at the rallies. That'll be a tongue twister. Riley's going to be at all the rallies. And so she is here for a sneak peek. Uh, this is Riley. Get on over here, beautiful. Uh, this is Riley. She's going to be at all three of the rallies. Uh, Riley, what are your thoughts on uh, going around to all these rallies with me? I think it'll be fun. Thinks it'll be fun. See, this is how weird she is. She thinks this is fun. So I would like to know your thoughts on our governor. Snake. Snake. He's kind of a snake. But I was talking before about how keeping me humble. I got mailed <laughs> this sticker. My governor is an idiot, and I would like you to tell everybody what you said about this sticker if I'm elected governor. It'll be true for both of our governors then. Isn't that great? In the event that I win the election, this right here, this sticker, is going to continue. It's still going to be true. It's still going to be true, and people are absolutely <laughs> going to be buying these things right and left for the next four years, eight years as me as governor. They're all going to be... <laughs> are going to be selling out of these things. So I think it's important for us to always realize whoever our governor is, there's going to be times this is going to be true. The current governor, however, this is true like all the time. All the time. He's my new campaign manager. He is my new campaign manager. What is it about Jay Inslee that makes me think that he's working for me? Um, because he's trying every day just to get you in office. He's trying so hard. What's, what kinds of things is he doing to get me into office? Um, required masks. It's a big one. That's a big one. People are really upset about that. And so what we're going to do, we're doing a lawsuit to seek to find out if this is even constitutional, mandating that everybody do this. Uh, but this uh, <laughs> sticker is going to be a, a sellout blowout right now while Inslee's governor but when I win, and I'm actually the governor of the state of Washington, this sucker is going to sell like hotcakes in Seattle, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be in Port Orchard later today on Saturday at a Riley rally. I mean, a rally with Riley. Riley rally or rally with... Yeah. So we're going to be doing that. And then we're going to be at Yakima tomorrow uh, at the Yakima Speedway from 1 to 3 p.m. And then we're going to be in Wenatchee uh, uh, going to uh, a big rally up there as well. So go to our website. It's Tim, the number four, gov.com. 
Tim, the number four, GOV.com, and you can learn about all the various events and where we're going to be. So the highlight of the thing is going to be, of course, Riley. Uh, everybody's seen me. Everybody's heard my stuff. Uh, but a uh, chance to meet her. So I'm going to have signs, uh, campaign signs at the various rallies. I'm uh, going to have t-shirts there. I'm uh, going to make sure that uh, everybody has a chance uh, to be able to meet us, talk with us, um, answer questions. Uh, just for fun, we'll pick one. Let's go with... Jake, is it legal for the mask no service if you have a medical reason not to? Uh, even Inslee's rule says there's an exception for this, but all the stores are terrified because they're all told they're going to get a $10,000 fine if they find anybody. 5, is it? 5000 Labor and Industries is imposing a $10,000 fine. If you don't wear a mask, it's 1000 on you and 90 days in jail but the business gets 10,000. So they are busting your stuff. Bowls, can I say bowls? No, uh, busting your, 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 your chops over the idea of not wearing one. So I'm holding this up because somebody mailed me this, which I love the uh, sense of humor that they have there. Uh, and so this will apply uh, for the next mm, six months while we've got Inslee, but when I'm the governor, these things are gonna sell like hotcakes. So maybe we can do this as a fundraiser. All eight years, maybe. All eight years, that's right. See the confidence we have? This is fantastic. <laughs> so anyway, Riley will be at all the rallies. Uh, Tessa, who's one of my favorite people in the world, is uh, watching right now, and we're going to hit wave at her, but we're just going to do a, a real wave. Wave at Tessa. We love Tessa. Tessa organized that uh, rally that Sasha Baron crashed. And I uh, thought that was really funny. So where can I get a yard sign in Spokane? The absolute, Jennifer, the best way to get campaign signs is to go to our website, Tim, the number four, gov.com, go forward slash yard hyphen signs, yard hyphen signs. So really, really appreciate you guys uh, listening in. Uh, Riley, of course, uh, made a, a sneak preview idea of what uh, she's going to be like. Um, she does call him a snake. She calls him a snake. I've called him a snake. Trump's called him a snake. And she calls him a snake. She's the only one that makes it cute. She's the only one that makes it cute. Uh, so um, uh, really want to thank you guys for everything you're doing as far as uh, supporting my uh, run for governor. Uh, we're all going to be choosing very, very soon. Oh, um, Kristen is asking, I missed the last debate. Is it still available to view? Absolutely. If you go to our website, it's Tim, the number four, gov.com. Go forward slash updates. Under updates, she's She's back. She's getting her phone right now, and apparently she's recording me, recording me to us together with her, what is it, TikTok, Instagram, other stuff. So she's doing all other things. Um, okay, John says he calls him much worse than a snake. So John, what kinds of words come to mind? <laughs> I can think of one. I can, no, okay. All right, what does your word start with? What letter? Just a letter? Let people use their imagination. You're not willing to do it? No. She has other words. So like, love, comment, make sure everybody knows. Can't find a sign in Whatcom. Go to the site. Go, Tim, go. Thank you very much, Rand. Uh, best to go to Tim, the number four, gov.com forward slash yard hyphen signs. Yard hyphen signs. So everybody's out there just working their butt off. Thank you. Josh Myers. Uh, Josh is going to be uh, uh, taking care of me and Riley at the various things. I'm just, I'm so grateful to Josh and Chris that they're willing to uh, do that and take care of us. Uh, so I think it's going to be a really, really good uh, positive thing. John says he can't post them here, the words that he would use to describe Jay Inslee. Uh, uh, our president calls him a snake. Uh, I've called him a snake. Uh, I have some words. Riley has words too. Come on, give me a no. first a first letter. A B. A B. <laughs> B B. A boy. A boy. Brat. He's a borat. He's a brat. He's no. a. B <laughs> He's not good. It's not a good word. Uh, uh, Inslee, a con artist. An excellent word. Inslee's suffers tyrannical dictator syndrome. We call it TDS. TDS. Absolutely. A very good word for, from Jennifer. Uh, we'll go for a couple more minutes. It's actually kind of fun. What are the words that you would use 
to, you can bring that chair over, uh, one of the things here. But uh, Bastage says Tracy. Uh, Bastage. That's an interesting word. B A S T A G. <gasps> Nat, Cindy's got a good one. Um, female dog. Yes. Arse punk. There, I said it for her. Laugh out loud. Thank I love you. that one. That's a good one. <laughs> Beach, arse punk. Bully. Bully is an excellent word for Josh. Uh, deep state puppet from John. Absolutely a great description. Um, Riley, any other? <laughs> oh, I got likes and loves from that one. Deep State Puppet seems to be a major uh, winner right now. Uh, Jay Sleazy and Sideshow Bob. <laughs> Fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> you got her busting up laughing. That's a good one. Uh, Candy is weighing in. Oh, I love you, Candy. Thank you for coming on board. I just wave to you. I don't know if I have to do something special to bring you in. I guess I have to. So, can't bring in Candy on camera. I have no idea why. Candy, my phone doesn't like you. It's nothing personal. You're probably a very nice person. Uh, maybe my phone senses you're backing one of the other candidates, and we didn't want to let you in here. But, uh, no, the thing I really want to emphasize over and over again <laughs> as she's doing her thing is that this is deeply serious business. We are, I'm running against Jay Inslee. I'm running against Jay Inslee because I couldn't sit back and have this guy get four more years. I looked at the other candidates that were running, all good guys. I just didn't think they were going to get the job done. And I wouldn't be running unless I thought that I is, am uniquely qualified to take him out. I'm tired of our side losing these elections. I'm tired of our guys being too nice. I don't see that toughness that I think it's going to take. And I think that you have to have that reservoir of goodwill that you, that I've built up over 22 years, lowering everybody's taxes, making sure that I'm fighting the fights for everybody in the snake pit of politics. I think you learn a lot that you're going to need in this fight. And I think that all the things that all the crap that I've got to deal with is nothing compared to the crap that's getting dumped on the other guys right now. I think we've all learned that the other side is just gonna come after whoever it is that's gonna be our nominee. You have to have somebody that's got the dinosaur skin to be able to take it, but even more importantly, to stay focused. I've noticed a lot of thin skins and weakness among a lot of the people that are, that are running and getting upset over campaign signs and getting upset about voicemail messages that were mean. And I'm just like rolling my eyes going, in 2001, I'm doing a property tax limiting initiative. 2001, right after 9-11, I was compared to Osama bin Laden. I was told it was Osama bin Ayman. I'm debating firefighters. I'm uh, uh, debating uh, police officers. This is in 2001. This is 19 years ago. And I chalked up a 58% to 42% victory. If I had gotten all worked up over being called names and people leaving mean voicemail messages for me or campaign signs, I mean, Jiminy Christmas, if you're going to get that worked up over that stuff, just imagine if you're the nominee. So can we go and arrest these snakes and Seattle that have broken their oath of office. Uh, James asks a totally reasonable question. I think what we need is to actually elect a governor that doesn't mind taking control when the local elected officials aren't doing their jobs. And right now, <laughs> Jenny Durkin is not doing her job. She's just basically the mayor's just completely deferred to Kashama Sawant, the socialist on the Seattle City Council. I just don't think at the end of the day, it makes a whit of difference. Cindy says, I don't care about the skeletons in your closet. You're effective and you produce results. That's what I care about. Cindy, thank you for that. I don't have any skeletons in my closet. All my skeletons have been on the front page of the Seattle Times. All my stuff has been out there forever. And it's all the stuff that you all heard last year with $30 tabs. The reality is it doesn't matter to voters how about how my paperwork did for my campaigns. They don't care about the chair. They think that this is all silly stuff. This is just dumb, especially when you're running against Jay Inslee, where he's raised taxes $50 billion, $50 billion in higher taxes. I'm going to stay focused on that. 
the fact that I would go out and spend $300 for printers, but I wouldn't spend an extra 70 for a chair. I mean, it's just silly stuff if you really think about it. But the other side is hyperventilating because they're terrified I'm going to be the nominee. Because if I'm running against Jay Inslee, they know I'm going to be aggressive. They know that I'm not going to be distracted. They're going to know that there are millions of people in the state of Washington where I lowered their taxes. And, and uh, uh, I've heard it said to me just uh, so many times over the last 22 years, Tim, you've saved me more money than any politician ever has. All the other candidates, they haven't actually delivered any results for you any time in your lives. They're all good guys but they haven't actually delivered results. I've delivered results both prior to running, but also while running. Our schools are gonna open this fall simply because we challenged, legally challenged Jay Inslee closing down our schools and violating the constitution. That alone is, I've done more for education just with that than any of the other, certainly other candidates, but also the fact that uh, did more than uh, Jay Inslee's done in eight years for education. Thing that I'm really proud of with our lawsuits, by the way, is every one of the lawsuits wasn't about making sure that I don't have to wear a mask. I'm making sure that it's a lawsuit where everybody gets to not have to wear a mask. Opening up the schools isn't just for Riley. I'm opening it up for all kids. I'm making sure that I'm uh, challenging essential versus non-essential lawsuit isn't just so that what me can go out and be considered essential. Another candidate did a lawsuit that was just for himself. Great, that's awesome that, that he did that, did a lawsuit where he himself can get the results of the lawsuit. Didn't do it for anybody else, just himself. Now, it's a very good victory, it's a very positive thing. But every one of the lawsuits that I've been involved with is to make sure that it wasn't just me that was benefiting, that it was absolutely everybody. I'm not in favor of moral victories. I'm in favor of victory. I want to make sure that everybody gets the results, uh, the positive results of these lawsuits. If you're going to do a lawsuit, you ought to like actually stay in it all the way and deliver the results that you're aiming for and not withdraw it afterwards. Uh, I just think at the end of the day, it's a really fundamental difference. I don't want moral victories. I want absolute victory. And the only way we can do that is by making me the nominee in August. Uh, is it even possible for a governor to arrest or fire a city official? Can't arrest him, can't fire him, but you can absolutely step right in and do the job that they're not doing. If they're not ab absolutely taking care and protecting uh, people locally, you can absolutely step in and do that. And, and really, that's the kind of leverage you have to have because of that. Jay Inslee didn't want to intervene in Seattle because he didn't want to make the Seattle elected officials mad. I'm always making Seattle elected officials mad. Uh, Marie says, loved watching you at the debate Thursday night. Awesome job, two hearts. Thank you for that, uh, Marie. I was absolutely on fire. And, and the reason I was is because all the candidates were there. This Zoom stuff, I'm sorry. Just nobody can absolutely uh, do what it takes in order to show you what they're going to do as a candidate. And one of the things that I highlighted, which I think is really important, is that when Jay Inslee locked down this state, I didn't, I didn't stop uh, running for office. All the other candidates, they stayed at home when Jay Inslee said stay home. I stayed out there. I stayed out there every single, <clears throat> every single day because there's nothing more dangerous than four more years of Jay Inslee. Keith Gunner, $25 from Keith. Riley! What? Keith just gave $25. We need a cheer over here. So everybody that uh, gives money... You're going to hear Riley cheer. She's going to come in from the other room at some point. But Keith gave $25. I'm putting her to work. This is what it is. So go and donate. And there it is. That's what you get when you donate money. You get Riley cheering for you. So that is a very important incentive. So Tim, the number four, gov.com forward slash donate. So the uh, big event down in uh, Port Orchard, we're going to be going that uh, relatively soon here, but I was making the point before and then just show you, this is the kind of focus I have. I can have a beautiful daughter come in here, cheer for Keith. And remember that what we were talking about was when Jay Inslee shut down the state, I stayed out there. The other candidates stayed home. 
They stayed home on, and then for a long time. And it was only after they saw me being out there that they were willing to get out there. So I believe that I've been leading every step of the way, even in this race for governor. It's not enough to just say, if you elect me, I'll be a leader. It's no, you need to be a leader at all times. And so going down to the lawless zone, I went down there right away because I saw Inslee denying that it even existed. One other candidate went down there too, went down there in the morning and everybody was sleeping and nobody recognized him and it really wasn't that big a deal. But when mine, when I did it, it was intense because they saw me, they knew me and they saw me as a threat because I'm a conservative and they know that somebody like me is willing to stand up to them and say no to them. And I did uh, there as well. Uh, Seth says, outstanding at the debate, great energy, great delivery. Oh, thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Have you ever thought of using Microsoft Teams for these things? Uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, Microsoft, by the way, not a big fan of uh, the initiatives we've done over the years. They spent tons of money against $30 car tabs. $30 car tabs, this initiative that the voters keep voting for, that you're going to get uh, when I'm governor, uh, absolutely committed to making sure that you get your $30 tabs in the event, uh, or when I'm the governor, uh, absolutely I will deliver on that. But Microsoft will probably fight that because Microsoft is also teaming up with Jay Inslee when it comes to this facial recognition tracking down in, um, down at the SeaTac airport. Absolutely committed, working with Lewis SeaTac uh, uh, resident there on an initiative, local initiative to repeal that, make sure that nowhere in the city limits of SeaTac are they gonna have that. That's the kind of fight that we're fighting every step of the way. And I think that that's what you want as a fighter. Uh, Seth, wonderful. Thank you again for that nice compliment. Um, uh, John says, Washington State under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people by the people Seymour, shall not perish from this earth. It was said a long time ago, it was written a long time ago. It still applies. All evidence to the contrary, that is absolutely the kind of government that we're supposed to have, but we don't have it right now. And I'm doing everything I can to fight back against Jay Inslee. I was interviewed by a reporter yesterday, and she said, are you wearing a mask? And I said, there's nothing, that you know, not wearing a mask, Nothing more dangerous than, uh, than, uh, than Jay Inslee getting four more years. That is more dangerous to me. Michael Tillman just gave $50, Riley. Yeah. Not good enough. Michael Tillman deserves an extra boost and of, of enthusiasm because, Michael, thank you very, very much. I'm so yeah. grateful for your yeah. willingness to do that. She's coming. She's coming. Michael Tillman gave $50. Did you notice that she was more enthusiastic this time because it was $50? Why is that? The more you give, the more she cheers. Can you imagine what would happen if you gave even more than that? She can do so much stuff. She's getting ready. She's getting ready. She's 12. No one on the planet believes that she's 12. It is so amazing. Look how tall she is. This is like 12. Just turned 12. Absolutely mind-blowing uh, to me. And what was it? I got the year of your uh, birth wrong. Where were we when I did this? This is like so awful. Uh, what a we horrible were at father. the um, <laughs> face trap, uh, the face tracking. <gasps> that was facial it. Facial recognition. And he shows a picture from when I was six months old. I was born in 2008. He goes, this is from 2010. And I'm like, Dad. If, it, if it's from 2010, I would be two. I was six months old in this picture. Stupid, stupid. Hey, by the way, does this still apply when I win? This will still apply when I win. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so one of my favorite stories about me and Riley is the Puyallup Fair, which has been canceled because of Jay Inslee. Uh, uh, famously, we, my daughter and I, Riley, we were down there. We were collecting signatures for our $30 tabs initiative. And one of the rides said, um, in order to ride on this, you must have a responsible adult. And responsible, he's an adult. she said, she's responsible. I'm the adult. So that, therefore, the two of us uh, can, uh, can actually yeah, ride it. Make the that's right. Uh, Misty says, nothing more dangerous than Jay Inslee. J-I, absolutely true. 
Um, then we're flashing through here. Misty says, Jay and Microsoft are one. Absolutely. How True. many people believe that a lot of the stuff that Jay Inslee is doing is because of Bill Gates? Can I have a like or a love for everyone who believes that Jay Inslee is making many of his decisions during this time based on his um, uh, uh, um, being bought off by uh, Jay Inslee? All right, blah, 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 blah. By Microsoft. How many people believe that Jay Inslee is making these decisions? It's exploding right now on the phone. People, it's just common sense. Follow the money. It's worked for, uh, in so many times with politics. That's just the way it works. Um, would you have shut down the state for COVID-19? Doreen wants to know. The South Dakota governor did not shut down her state. A handful of states did not shut down their states. The South Dakota governor is the model that I would follow. And the reason why she did it, and I thought this was the most inspiring part of her message, was she said she looked at the Constitution and she didn't see anywhere in there the power to shut down a private business. She was following the Constitution. Now, we have to have a three-legged stool. We have to have safety, we have to have liberty, and we have to have a strong economy. We must have all three at all times for us to have any shot at any of those three. Safety, we can't have safety unless we have a strong economy because a strong economy generates the tax revenue that we need in order to be able to fund these government services. You can't have liberty if you're not safe. So we wanna make sure that you're getting all three of those. Jay Inslee, he shut down the state. He shut down liberty. Supposedly he was doing all this in order to make us safer. Because he sacrificed liberty, because he sacrificed a strong economy, he ended up making it l us less safe, and we got none of the three. If you keep all three going at the same time, you actually have a shot at a good functioning government. Uh, I think I would not have shut down the state. I would have kept the state open, but I would have encouraged people to wear masks. I would have encouraged people to follow the guidelines that we were being told were going to end up making things better. If people didn't want to do those things, I would not impose fines. I wouldn't impose jail time. That's the kind of stuff that Jay Inslee's doing. The South Dakota governor actually bragged about the fact that she wasn't using coercive tactics in order to be able to get people to do the things that she was persuading them to do because that is a governor that respects the constitution that's a governor that respects the people and that's the kind of governor you want and riley had a point what was it not jay inslee jay inslee decided to kind of go with this approach uh and basically say i want to run the lives of seven million people that's what Jay Inslee did. He's perfectly comfortable making decisions for 7 million people. I got my hands full just running my own life. I have no interest in running 7 million people's lives. Uh, Microsoft, Bill Gates is a puppet master of Inslee, says John. I totally agree. Uh, Phil, hi from Lake Stevens. Phil, thank you for weighing in. That's fantastic. Uh, Misty says yes. No problem. Good luck, says Michael. Michael. Thank you, man. Seriously, $50 is really fantastic. I just, I'm so grateful. We're in these final days of our reporting period, and I really do want to encourage people to donate. Again, it's Tim, the number four, gov.com, timforgov.com. Donate. Donate if you like the fact that I had a good performance on this debate. If you thought I did a good job that night contrasting myself with the other candidates, donate because of that. Donate because I'm doing all these rallies this weekend and giving people a chance to uh, meet me and get signs and get bumper stickers and get all the things that we're doing out there. If you like the fight that I'm fighting, if you like the fact that I'm defying Jay Inslee every chance I get, if you like the lawsuits uh, that, uh, that we filed and the teams I'm building together, I hope I'm illustrating uh, effectively that it's not a one person show. It is not like I'm gonna be the governor and everything else is done. I'm gonna always build teams to tackle these problems. These lawsuits are not a one person show. It is an absolute team effort. Lisa Thomas, Clint Didier, uh, Dean uh, Wells Fry, uh, Rowan Wilson, all the plaintiffs in the case, 
They're all doing their part. They're all doing their thing. Steven Pigeon, our attorney. These are team efforts, just like all the initiatives I've done. And so that's the kind of governor I'm going to be as well, is building teams to tackle each of these problems. Homelessness, education, transportation. I'm always going to build a team. And I did make the point at the debate afterwards. I just said, hey, every single one of those people on the stage, I would absolutely extend an invitation for them to serve if they want to in the I'm in administration. You know, there's somebody on that stage I think would be perfectly uh, a position to be in the department, uh, run our department of, of health and human services. Somebody on that stage being in, start of, in charge of the state patrol and, and law enforcement in our state. Uh, there was somebody on that stage, absolutely, I'd want to have in charge of transportation. I would want to have uh, many of these people as far as inspector generals and making sure that we hold government accountable. This whole idea that somehow it's a zero-sum game and that if I win, everybody else loses is not true. I am absolutely committed to building a team that's going to build, uh, beat Jay Inslee after August. And I'm absolutely committed to that. I mean, that is my laser beam focus. If you want to think of it in these terms, you're hiring me to win the election. You're hiring me to win the election for the Republican Party, and we can then have all the people that you like, all the people that you're supporting, if you're not supporting me as the number one candidate, my job is to get all of them implementing conservative policies in the state of Washington. But they can't win the election uh, uh, this cycle because they just don't have any experience doing that. You're hiring me to win this election and save this state from four years, four more years of Jay Inslee. That's your, that's my job. That's what my my role is in this process. Once I'm in there, I would be building teams of people that you're gonna love and you're gonna cheer for, but I'm the only one who can get the job done. So anyway, I love you guys. Uh, we're just looking through here one more time. Charles. Parker is watching. I'm using last names every once in a while. Uh, Michael Michael Tillman says, thanks for the cheer. Yeah, she's giggling. She loves that. Uh, Cindy says, don't feel bad. My kids don't even know their own names. You not knowing her birth year gets a pass. Thank you for that. 2008. 2008. It was the day after Cinco de Mayo, May 6th. Hard to forget. We get a phone call. That says a little girl's been born in uh, Dayton, Ohio. If you fly out here today, you can get her. And so Riley's adopted. My th you know, other two kids are adopted, Jackson and Jeremy. During the debate, by the way, I got a little tongue twisted on the birth mothers of my kids. Uh, Marilyn is the birth mother of Riley. Uh, birth mother of Jackson is Tracy. Birth mother of Jeremy is Jennifer. As I'm trying to recount their names, I get tongue twisted and I go... Oh, this is so me. And then I remembered it was Tracy. And it was the third name of the birth mother. But, I mean, these three women all chose adoption. And, and I brought it up in the debate that I'm absolutely committed as one of my policy priorities is to make it easier for women to choose the adoption option. Uh, I saw how much of a struggle it was uh, for Marilyn, Tracy, and Jennifer. Uh, uh, during that process, we had an open adoption. And, uh, and I'm absolutely committed to that. Uh, we're just flipping through here. I'm going a little longer than I thought. Uh, Misty says, you guys are great. Uh, Misty says uh, that you're great, Riley. Yay. She says, yay. All right. Dimsley is an idiot. Dimsley. That is Dad's idiot. Misty Gray. So many businesses are going to suffer because of no Puyallup Fair. I can't tell you. Just earlier today, Riley pointed out to me the fact that the fairs being shut down is such a travesty. I mean, it is absolutely awful. The commerce that's going to be lost, the jobs that are going to be lost, the people that are going to be suffering as a result of that. And none of us should ever make uh, the mistake of saying that COVID is calling, causing all this stuff. It is Jay Inslee causing all of this to occur. It is his responsibility. He has chosen to shut down our state. And what he's doing is he's pitting everybody against one another. If you're wearing a mask, you're not wearing a mask. You get people pitted against each other. His snitch list of 25,000 people, he wants everyone attacking one another. Labor and industries coming in with $10,000 fines, allowing businesses to basically tattle on their competitors, try and put them out of business. 
I'm laser beam focused on beating Jay Inslee because I realize the, uh, everything about what he's doing is, has been bad for us. And I want to stay laser beam focused on that. That's one of the reasons why I don't attack the other candidates because they're all good guys. Uh, I'm just, uh, know that I want to have all of them, all of their supporters supporting me if I'm chosen in August. And just to be absolutely clear about this, and I just, I'm hoping that this gets shared across the board. If the voters don't choose me in August, I'm a thousand percent in favor of whoever it is the voters choose. I've spent 22 years saying, let the voters decide. If the voters in August decide to choose one of the other people to take on Jay Inslee, and let's be clear, it's going to be Inslee plus somebody else. Inslee plus somebody else. Let's stop the delusion that somehow we're going to beat Jay Inslee in the primary. It will not happen. It will be Inslee and one other person. If that one other person is me, you're going to have a pit bull. You're going to have an absolute Tasmanian devil. One person that's absolutely a thousand percent committed to taking out Jay Inslee and highlighting everywhere, every which way that he's held us back. And I will have used my 17 statewide campaigns that I've run and all the expertise that I've developed over those 17 campaigns to score you a victory. I will score you a victory because I know what it takes to actually beat this guy. But if the voters end up deciding it's somebody else, I am a thousand percent committed to doing everything I can to make sure that that person ends up being uh, beating Jay Inslee. I will do everything I can to make sure that they're um, having the backup that they deserve. Uh, we all signed a piece of paper that said we're all committed to supporting the uh, 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 other candidate if the other candidate ends up winning. In these final weeks, though, we have all sorts of people saying, well, if it's not that guy, I'm not going to support him. If it's this other guy, I'm not going to support him. It is absolutely critical that whoever it is that wins the primary is the one that we rally around. You didn't get your first choice. Your first choice, think about it. Your best choice, your first choice is yourself. You're the number one choice. You want it to be you. Somebody that agrees with you all the time is you. Your spouse doesn't even agree with you all the time, your partner, anybody that you know, any of your friends, none of them agree with you all the time. Reality is the voters are making the decision for us. No smoke-filled rooms, no backroom deals, no all drop out if you do something like this or whatever. I mean, that kind of crap is not how our state works. We're gonna be choosing two people to advance to the fall ballot. I'm a thousand percent convinced it's going to be me versus Inslee. But if I'm wrong and it ends up being somebody else, I am not going to be angry. I'm not going to be upset. I'm going to say the voters have chosen. And from now until August 4th, I'm going to spend zero percent of my time trying to trash the other guys in the race. Not an ounce of my effort is going to be saying bad things about them. I am upset, visibly viscerally upset that if anybody thinks that all this crap that's dropping on all these candidates in these final couple of weeks had anything to do with me. I didn't do any of that stuff. I firmly believe the other candidates are leaking stuff on one another. And, and I think that they are really going after each other. I think it's a mistake. I think it's the wrong way to go. But at the end of the day, they're doing what they're doing. I've spoken out against it. I'm not for it. I'm not leaking stuff on any of these other guys. I just, I'm not playing the game that way. My job is to convince you that I am the best candidate to take on Jay Inslee. The other candidates are playing this zero sum game. They're kind of really going after each other. They're encouraging their supporters to go after each other. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me, but that's what's going on. Each of us has a different kind of campaign that we're running right now. Uh, clearly, I am running on actually delivering results. I'm talking about the 22 years that I've been fighting. I'm talking about those kinds of things. I'm, you know, doing these debates and I'm just absolutely, you know, trying to illustrate my level of passion uh, that I have to take out uh, Jay Inslee. There are other candidates in the race that are doing, you know, rallies and, you know, and they're doing lots of money and they're doing all the stuff that they're doing and that's their approach. That's the deal. And that's the approach that they're taking. 
At the end of the day, I think voters are gonna end up choosing somebody that's actually already delivered results while running and delivered results prior to running. And I think voters are gonna choose somebody that they already know. And I think my, frankly, my voters pamphlet statement, I think is radically better uh, than the other candidates ones because I ended up breaking the rules and making sure that in my voters pamphlet statement, I'm bashing Inslee. I'm highlighting the fact that he betrayed us. In the event that I'm the candidate, I'm gonna have in the voters pamphlet side by side an argument from Jay Inslee saying, you know, why he thinks he's, he's good. And my argument is it just trashes the crap out of the guy saying he betrayed you and raised taxes 50 billion and, and uh, squandered $5 million running for president. I mean, those are things that absolutely, I think, take me a notch up. There's this TVW that has a video voter's guide. In my video voter's guide, I got five minutes. What did I do? I basically bashed Inslee and highlighted all the things that I've done over the years. One of the other candidates didn't even submit, one of the top candidates in the race, didn't even submit a TVW video voter's guide. I just don't think that's the right way to go. I don't think that's a winning strategy. And so, so each of us brings a different strategy that we're putting forward. And I think my strategy of staying focused on Inslee, having a really aggressive voters pamphlet statement, running on all the stuff that I've done over the years, making sure that I make it clear that every single one of the people that are uh, involved in this race, uh, the top candidates, they all have a chance uh, if they want to, if I win uh, the election, when I win the election in November, we'll have a place in the administration so that everyone's gonna see that. If it's not me in August taking on Jay Inslee, you're gonna see the fiercest fighter you've ever seen promoting that person that the voters ended up choosing. And I am absolutely committed to doing that. Uh, the, uh, and I want to make sure that our supporters uh, do that as well. We're not gaining anything uh, going after the other candidates. I don't see the point of doing that. Uh, the Democrats are doing a fine job. The media is doing a fine job going after them. I don't see why we're jumping on that uh, bandwagon. It doesn't make any sense to me uh, at all. Um, uh, I do believe that it's okay for me to highlight the fact that I've run 17 statewide campaigns and won 11 of them, and they haven't. Uh, I don't think that that's a you know personal slight or anything like that. But you are seeing these other candidates are dealing with stuff that is, let's just say, radically more serious and debilitating for them if they're the candidate. Uh, uh, the stuff I've got, you know, campaign uh, uh, paperwork and the chair, the seven dollar chair is just silly stuff. I mean, it's just dumb. Uh, and it's offset by all the stuff that I've done uh, along the way, all the um, uh, goodwill that I've built up, lowering taxes and making sure that everybody uh, ends up having these limits on affirmative action. I mean, all the things that I've accomplished is offset by this silly stuff, a stuff that's getting dumped on these other guys, I think, is being leaked by the other candidates against one another. And I haven't got a doubt in my mind that if they had more stuff on me, they'd be dumping that out there too. The reality is, like I said, I wasn't completely joking when I said earlier, I don't have any skeletons in my closet. My skeletons have all been on the front page of the Seattle Times. You know all my stuff. And my stuff, in the scheme of things, isn't that big a deal. It's also not true. It's all not true true. But I also know at the end of the day, the accusation, everyone's going to believe it. The accusations against me, that I took a chair, that my campaign reporting wasn't correct, everyone's going to believe it. I've already tested that and we've learned that the voters don't care about any of this stuff. They did $30 tabs overwhelmingly. They know me. They know me as the $30 tabs guy. These other guys, the crap that's getting dumped on them, they don't even know who they are yet. And the first introduction they're learning about them is the crap that's getting dumped on them because the other candidates are going after one another. They're dumping this stuff on one another. This last minute stuff is crushing because what it does is it shows you that as you're getting to know these guys for the first time, you're learning all their stuff at the last minute. You've known about my stuff since last November. You've known about my stuff for the last 22 years. And I'm always getting beat up all the time 
frankly, it reminds me a lot of the president. The president, they've been just hitting him so many times. I don't think that it ends up really having any effect on people, but just there's, it's so ridiculous, most of the stuff that they end up doing. The other guys are dealing with much more serious stuff than anything I've got to deal with. And I'd much rather be in a position to be defending our stuff and having my supporters only have to deal with this, you know, silly stuff than some of the stuff that's dealing uh, here with the other guys. So uh, with that, it's 3.30. I think I got to get on the road so I can go to Port Orchard. So I'm on my way to Port Orchard. Riley's coming with me. Uh, tomorrow we are doing uh, Yakima and we're doing um, and we're doing Wenatchee and so doing those two rallies and there's other stuff that we're doing as well uh, that we'll be uh, announcing it uh, but I'll just do one last flip take personal responsibility absolutely what would you do about the current police situation in the state make it better not worse and see his cronies in Olympia could care less about the Washington State constitutions absolutely committed uh, to uh, following the Constitution. And I would like to think that you would see that by doing lawsuits, you're trying to find out whether or not Inslee is violating those constitutional rights. I'm absolutely committed to the Constitution. I want to fight for the Constitution. I'm not just going to say I will, because anybody can say it. I'm actually showing you that I'm doing it. So it's Tim, the number four, gov.com, timforgov.com, forward slash donate, forward slash volunteer, forward slash yard hyphen signs, that is where you go to be able to help. So I'm so grateful uh, for you guys' uh, help and support. And uh, see you in Port Orchard. We'll probably do a Facebook Live there. And uh, you're going to hear more from Riley, of course, because frankly, you know, everybody loves her and not everybody loves me. So anyway, I love you guys. I'll talk to you later.